musica leggera nel silenzio assordante Per non cadere dentro al buco nero Che è stato un passo Romagna, finalmente un sorriso Più investiamo nel presente, prima raggiungiamo il futuro. Questa è l'idea che ci spinge ogni giorno a muovere il nostro paese verso la ripresa, a dare a tutti nuovi percorsi da seguire, a usare l'innovazione per essere più liberi di crescere, a esportare la nostra eccellenza italiana nel mondo, ad anticipare i cambiamenti per costruire un domani più sostenibile con tutti voi. Perché il futuro è la nostra destinazione solo se è un viaggio che facciamo insieme. Finalmente un sorriso. 
più investiamo nel presente, prima raggiungiamo il futuro. Questa è l'idea che ci spinge ogni giorno a muovere il nostro paese verso la ripresa, a dare a tutti nuovi percorsi da seguire, a usare l'innovazione per essere più liberi di crescere, a esportare la nostra eccellenza italiana nel mondo, ad anticipare i cambiamenti per costruire un domani più sostenibile con tutti voi. Perché il futuro è la nostra destinazione solo se è un viaggio che facciamo insieme. Buonasera, buonasera a tutti. Buonasera. Good evening, good evening everyone. Good evening for those who are here with us and for those who follow us in streaming. Welcome to this year's meeting. We are again here in presence, but we can also have our connections. And so there are, um, well, all the tools that we have acquired from our dramatic experience during the COVID crisis. So, well, uh, this, uh, uh, this session is entitled Livability and Accessibility, the Inclusive City. And uh, we have been uh, uh, discussing the uh, cities since 2019, uh, social housing, and then last year we talked about uh, urban regeneration, and now we um, kind of uh, reach the end of this first uh, path following this uh, fil rouge of inclusive, inclusive cities. Uh, what makes a city the city of citizens of every single individual? Someone who has a responsibility as a citizen, as a manager. So it is uh, the city of individuals, but also the city of people living together. So this challenge uh, of uh, cities has become uh, even more important uh, after the pandemic because, uh, and we will be talking uh, about this uh, uh, with our uh, guests this afternoon, uh, the uh, pandemic brought about uh, further reflections on uh, life in the cities uh, and a debate as well uh, on uh, going back to small cities, towns and villages as if it were possible to uh, reverse the trend that we have witnessed in over the past few years where we uh, saw the development of big cities. So uh, as in many other sectors of our uh, economic life in Italy and abroad, the COVID pandemic has accelerated our reflections. What it, does it mean to have a human-sized city? What is the uh, challenge that uh, cities have to face in order to avoid uh, the uh, the um the fact that many um, many inhabitants uh, should leave because of uh, the high costs of living and uh, uh, particularly medium sized uh, cities and italian cities who mostly have uh, uh, a very special story so uh, how can uh, we avoid uh, the gentrification of cities? Uh, and what is the task of operators, uh, city managers, architects, urban managers, uh, and politicians? So this is the topic of our session this evening. Uh, but uh, we really want to know more about existing and ongoing experiences. and. Uh, we wanted to think about what has been done uh, over the past few years. So um, I'm really uh, 
happy to introduce our uh, guests. So, uh, Irene Tinagli, President of uh, the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee of the European Parliament. A great experience uh, in terms of international studies. Thank you for being here today. And here, Giuseppe Bonomi, Managing Director of Milano Sesto SPA. And connected remotely, Antonio De Caro, President of the National Association of Italian Municipalities and Mayor of Bari. And Carlo Ratti. Architect and engineer, professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Thank you for being here. Well, let's start straight away involving our guests in this debate. And we will start with our remotely connected guests. So I will uh, start with Mayor De Caro, and uh, this is my question for you. In uh, the last years, in uh, urban policies, uh, local policies uh, seemed to lack the um, skill to actually um, interact with the big. Uh, mm, operators and stakeholders and could not be the at the heart of uh, uh, change. Uh, well, the situation is now different because um, we are uh, now receiving the funds, the recovery funds, so many cities will be able to carry out projects. They will have uh, the resources uh, to uh, actually uh, do more and it, they will also have the opportunity uh, to uh, talk with those who represent the real estate world. And uh, this, uh, in a way, led us uh, uh, to an excessive planning of our uh, uh, cities from the urban point of view. And this uh, actually leads to uh, very uh, heated debates. Uh, so I would like to ask uh, Mayor De Caro, what do you think about uh, local um, policy in this new uh, era? Uh, so how can uh, cities develop, starting from your city, for instance, Bari, an important uh, city in the south of Italy, after the pandemic, what are the main uh, points in your urban policies. Uh, Mayor De Caro has a great experience in terms of uh, transports because he's been a municipal councillor for transports. So what's uh, this aspect of uh, um, inclusive, inclusive cities and in particular in Bari? Thank you for the invitation, and I'm really sorry I cannot be there in person. I've been there before, and I would have liked to be there again this year because I really enjoy the atmosphere of the meeting. But unfortunately, I'm taking part in uh, a, a big congress here uh, in uh, Castellaneta, and uh, that's why I'm not there with you today. Cities historically are uh, um, the place where the big problems of uh, men come together, but they also are the place where the most effective strategies are outlined. For years, the cities were uh, uh, like laboratories, uh, where uh, new policies were uh, uh, tried, and I talk about uh, climate change, new social balances, new economies, and um, experts 
uh, actually draw up strategies. For instance, the Amsterdam Pact, the third Habitat Conference. But while we were working at these strategies, well, the COVID uh, crisis hit. So uh, the strategies had to change. And uh, so maybe resilience is uh, the uh, word that has become uh, most topical at the moment because all the cities needed to change their organization. Let's think about transports. In uh, those uh, congresses at international level, everyone said that public uh, collective uh, transport needed to be encouraged versus private uh, transport. So uh, mayors had as a goal uh, the um, encouragement of the use of public transport. But then with uh, the arrival of COVID, we needed to cut the number of people on uh, buses uh, and uh, with a reduction by 50 percent and then by 80 percent uh, to uh, the um, in the number of people that could actually uh, be on uh, uh, public transport means. So we needed to change our strategies. So uh, why should we start our recovery from cities because when we had problems in our country in the past, we always started to recover in our municipalities without going back to the Middle Ages in the Renaissance when our country had to face difficult periods and then had to recover, uh, that recovery always started in municipalities. Uh, municipalities spent 25% of public works, so 25% of the total expenses of our country are devoted to our municipalities who can really spend in a very balanced way um, with uh, reference to the whole of uh, the uh, territory of uh, the area, whereas uh, there are other big investments uh, that are focused on a certain specific uh, uh, um, areas or places. And these are the data for 2019, uh, data from the uh, presidency of the Council of Ministers. And uh, it has been proven that in 2019, while public investors were uh, cutting public expenses, uh, municipalities were increasing their expenses by 30 percent. Then there is another reason. The themes, the topics that were uh, outlined by uh, the European Commission in uh, Digitalization Against Poverty, uh, these are areas that fall under the uh, uh, responsibility of municipalities and local policies has proven to be based on proximity, proximity. and uh, mayors had to, during the COVID crisis had to face the fear of their uh, citizens and their hopes. Um, let's think about uh, the choice of uh, many mayors uh, to go against a certain uh, uh, decrees. So uh, the mayor decided to renounce their competencies because this, the mayor in Italy are uh, those responsible for uh, health problems. So mayors have given up this power they have uh, so that uh, the, the central government uh, could actually manage uh, the crisis better. We needed to uh, help our citizen, uh, citizens uh, respect uh, restrictions, uh, and we had also the cooperation of associations, uh, schools, and uh, in order to uh, help uh, people, we had uh, 721 volunteers in Bari. Uh, to distribute food and uh, to help uh, people who needed to go, for instance, to the doctor or uh, to distribute uh, um, 
pharmaceuticals. So we had a solidarity network that emerged within our community thanks to schools and churches and associations that are really the basic structure of our communities and the so-called social private sector. And now it's time to think about recovery, restarting, and uh, there is a series of themes that had been uh, listed by mayors, uh, 10 themes uh, um, concerning uh, small and uh, medium and larger municipalities. And these uh, points uh, were then uh, um, taken uh, up in the national plan for uh, recovery and resilience, uh, starting thus with the smaller uh, municipalities, municipalities to avoid uh, the, that uh, these uh, um, villages are uh, uh, abandoned by their citizens. And Minister Franceschini helped us, the new Minister for Tourism helped us. The uh, ultra-large band, well, it has emerged uh, during the COVID crisis uh, that in many places in Italy, we do not have uh, this kind of uh, Wi-Fi connection. So many children could not follow the lessons at school uh, from home. So, well, uh, uh, we often talk about uh, uh, internationalization, competitiveness, but uh, uh, a, a, a company that cannot be connected uh, with other companies, uh, well, won't be able to be uh, competitive. So, well, uh, you cannot. Uh, um, you cannot try to win a race against a Ferrari with uh, a, a small car. And uh, um, we will, I think, uh, be able to help uh, our uh, municipalities to become uh, more user friendly, so to speak. Uh, seven years ago, Bari acquired a very important uh, software product which enabled uh, citizens uh, to obtain uh, documents, uh, birth certificates, uh, uh, and uh, other uh, certificates uh, in uh, uh, online, or to connect uh, directly to the municipal offices uh, to obtain uh, urban permits, for instance. Uh, before that, uh, uh, there were uh, people who had really had to do manual work in order to uh, find all the certificates needed. Today, this is uh, something that uh, uh, you can do with a simple click. But uh, there is another aspect we uh, never take into consideration. Uh, that is to say that these data needed to be then uploaded in our uh, online database. Uh, so if you wanted to print a birth certificate for someone who was born after 1992, you do not have any problem. But if you wanted to print out a certificate for someone who was born before 1992, well, the data are not online. So the database doesn't have these data. So uh, as a mayor, seven years ago, I announced to my citizens uh, that we finally had a software that would enable us uh, to print out the certificates, uh, which was uh, better than having than knowing someone who worked uh, in uh, the municipal offices in in order to uh, have uh, to speed up uh, uh, the uh, certificate issuing process. Uh, but then there are also other themes that are connected with the inclusion. I think about uh, uh, education. Uh, policies for uh, children that are now in their secondary school level and then the aspects that are connected to housing and uh, the uh, help, the aid for uh, those who have uh, loans for their houses. So these are aspects that we would like to financed through the uh, national uh, plan. And uh, then there is this uh, social housing program uh, that is, uh, well, actually not going very well because there is a difficult cooperation between private and public sectors. And then there are uh, uh, the uh, suburban areas. Uh, some big municipalities ask for uh, funds for these uh, peripheral areas. 
3 billion and 300 uh, million euros we uh, received a few years ago that enabled us uh, to, uh, in a way, um, reconnect these uh, suburban areas uh, to the uh, city. Uh, and uh, in Naples, for instance, uh, or in uh, the peripheral areas of Palermo, or even in my city where uh, we uh, created uh, public gardens and parks. So we really uh, understood the importance of uh, public open spaces uh, because uh, uh, this could counterbalance a community where uh, people preferred to shut themselves uh, in their own home. And once I met uh, uh, two, two ladies, and uh, I, I had become a mayor, well, I was a young mayor, and there was a just uh, um, a very small uh, playground for children. And I thought uh, that uh, they would uh, complain about that. Uh, on the contrary, they thanked me. So I said, uh, uh, thank they told me that because of uh, that uh, public playground, they had uh, finally met each other, they were spending time together, and so this is what mayors have been trying to do, creating uh, uh, areas where people can actually become a, a community within our own cities. So this is what we would like to do with the funds of the national plan. plan. So there is uh, this uh, paradigm of uh, sensitive uh, um, cities and inclusive cities in the post-pandemic area where a city need to be cities need to be more uh, um, reactive to change and to what is happening in general and also the exchange of information among citizens and the use of the big data uh, public use of big data this should uh, help local policies uh, and uh, local uh, decision makers uh, to face this uh, global challenge. Io ringrazio per l'inter I uh, thank you for your contribution and I will just make a short remark. First of all, we talked about the city as a lab for innovation. So I'm asking now um, architect Ratti, after the uh, uh, pandemic crisis, how can cities continue to be labs for innovation? And then uh, the mayor also mentioned two other very important aspects, as in the need for uh, social and inclusive policies and the need for uh, uh, helping socializing and uh, uh, making places to socialize uh, for citizens. I will now give the floor to uh, Mr. Ratti, uh, architect, uh, so that uh, he can talk about uh, uh, the challenges of cities after the pandemic, following up to what the Mayor De Caro said. I forgot to tell uh, our speakers we don't have uh, uh, much time. Uh, we have many people connected with us, uh, and therefore uh, we needed to uh, uh, stick to the time. Uh, so I'm asking the next uh, speakers to uh, speak for maximum 12 minutes so that we can have uh, a second round of questions, if possible. And I'll give you the floor. Thank you. I'll try to be uh, uh, quicker so that uh, we can have uh, uh, more time for debate at the end. I would have liked to be with you uh, in presence. I hope I'll be able to come back uh, in the future. So starting from the first topic, uh, the city as a lab for uh, innovation, as mentioned before. During the pandemic, we learned something very interesting. Uh, uh, cities uh, often look at the best practices, so uh, successful experiments that have been taken in the past. 
In doing so, usually the past is seen uh, as a model and uh, we do not go towards the future. Now, cities have found themselves in a new condition, in an unprecedented condition, where there were no models that could be followed. And so a lot of innovation has been done in a different way through a trial and error system. Let's think about Milan, one of the first big cities struck by COVID after China. Now, uh, uh, Milan, as well as uh, Paris, Madrid, and other major cities have tried to transform um, um, the road system and the traffic system. In Rue de Rivoli, for example, in Paris, uh, has been totally changed. So some cities have made significant changes. Some projects have been implemented in just a few weeks during the pandemic. So this is similar to what the Schumpeter said, the major economist, when he talked about the process of destructive creation in our cities. So. This is something new for our cities, and hopefully this dynamic will continue after COVID so that cities can be transformed into labs where there is more innovation. Let's think about traffic, uh, the urban system, and then adapt as needed. This is what nature does. Nature usually finds many solutions in natural evolution. And then it decides the solutions that work better. Milan was one of the first big cities to implement this model. And then this model was replicated in Europe and elsewhere. The World Economy Forum is working with many cities in order to improve this approach on urban innovation. Then there are the big topics, as you mentioned, so uh, uh, the social uh, 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 topic. So cities uh, through gentrification uh, tend to create new breaks. And then there is the relation between home and office. So talking about the social issues, well, uh, social issue is fundamental. It can be seen from different perspectives. What the mayor said about the big data is uh, very interesting. Big data can enable us to better understand the cities. Even in the case of uh, social inequalities, Stockholm is uh, working uh, using the data of apps, uh, of Twitters, and of social networks, and of uh, mobile phones to uh, uh, read these inequalities and interpret these inequalities inside the city. So we're no longer talking about the ghetto that there used to exist to be in the old cities, like in Venice, for example, and they were very visible. Now we're talking about invisible ghettos in our, in our cities, which we need to understand and to interpret in order to understand how to promote cohesion inside the city. In Stockholm, uh, for example, Many uh, inequalities inside the cities can be cured, treated with appropriate policies. Then uh, there is uh, the relation between home and office and the, the long-term impact that this will have. By now, we know that one year ago, everybody thought that work would be only more virtual, hence the rebirth of all the towns and villages. Italian towns and villages are wonderful, but as has just been said, urbanization is much stronger. Our cities 
uh, have experienced uh, similar pandemics in the past, but hence uh, the cities have always been attracting people. Everyone wants to reunite in uh, cities. We now know that uh, uh, going back to office will be very important in the future, maybe not to five days a week, but maybe just two days a week, so that we can meet our colleagues and we can mutually enrich ourselves. This is the reason why uh, you are all there in person in Rimini. You are in the same place because in that place you can have a lively debate which can enrich your lives. So probably we will go back to our offices, maybe not five days a week, and we will need to redesign urban planning so that uh, a new way to live and work with a couple of days of smart working will effectively work. So this is going to be a test. We uh, are working on different projects in Paris, in Milan, and Singapore, and in many other cities throughout the world to understand how new uh, public spaces and how the internal organization of uh, our offices can be more effective. Our houses may become a bit bigger, maybe with uh, one uh, uh, more room, one spare room that everyone wished to have uh, during the COVID times, uh, a room that we can use as we best wish. So from this perspective, uh, this period is very interesting for us all, for designers, for architects, uh, and for uh, all the people that live in cities. We need to think how we can reimagine our lives uh, and consequently our social spaces. So I've been very quick on these uh, three topics. I'm going to stop here so that uh, we have uh, more time at the end of the session for another round. Thank you. Thank you, architect. I think um, uh, 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 you also uh, outlined a very interesting approach because uh, uh, you said that, that there's a sort of a complexity uh, in cities, uh, there are breaks, uh, there are uh, uh, divisions in city. The, uh, uh, I think that it is important to understand uh, what the situation is like before uh, giving a definite answer. And maybe uh, that will uh, uh, go beyond the old planning method. Today, it is no longer possible to imagine about a planned city uh, or a city with a zoning plan. We need to risk adopting a, a, a different model. So we need to go beyond the limits of uh, outer planning uh, in order to tackle real situations. So I will now uh, give the floor back to uh, European and national politics. I will now ask uh, Irene, Tinagli, wh Irene Tinagli, what are the uh, challenges for politics in terms of uh, uh, urban development, in terms of development of cities, which, uh, as the two speakers have said, continue to be uh, um, a very important point for Italy. The major development, uh, big innovation, um, is based on cities. So what is the role of politics in this context? The uh, National Recovery and Resilience Plan is a tremendous opportunity, but this is not enough. We need to adopt a new national policy on cities. What is Europe doing in this context? Because clearly, um, uh, Italy can learn a lot from uh, Europe. What is happening around the world in this context? Thank you, and I'll give you the floor. Thank you. 
Thank you, and uh, uh, greetings to Carlo and Antonio. Hopefully, I'll be able to meet you very soon with Carlo. We used to meet many years ago because uh, before uh, getting into politics, uh, uh, I dealt a lot with uh, uh, urban economy and urban planning. In Europe, the recovery plan, the national recovery and resilience plan, after a few years where uh, urban planning uh, was no longer trendy in the national political debate uh, in Italy. There was a lot of uh, a debate on that in the early 1990s uh, and at the beginning of the uh, year 2000 on urban planning. In Italy, we talked about the redevelopment, the rebirth of big cities like Turin, for example. But my feeling is that uh, these topics uh, are no longer that sexy and that trendy. Then there was a big crisis and a big economic recession. Hence, uh, 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 we had to tackle different challenges. And then there, was, there were uh, different problems, and therefore all the problems and the topics related to cities as a way for innovation, for creativity, for inclusion were no longer trendy. Now it is the right time to uh, speak about uh, cities from their perspectives, because the European Union has set some objectives with the recovery plan for the EU, and these objectives will strongly need cities. If we think about objectives related to sustainability, uh, um, reduction of emissions, environmental sustainability, they will all need to be supported by cities. Only by working with cities uh, will we be able to make uh, progress. And cities are those that have suffered the most. The cities that we thought were almost invisible, like the major uh, art cities, the major tourist attractions, have been suffering a lot. Uh, uh, from the pandemic recently. And we have seen the enormous and devastating effect on economy, on families, on people, and on many aspects of our social and economic life. So now we have a daunting task, as in to reallocate these resources to achieve these objectives. And as Carlo Ratti said, we need to do that by abandoning old models, being aware that we have to tackle new challenges. We have to come up with new models of cities that we have not really yet designed. It's not that uh, we can just uh, um, uh, make up something new by uh, reading rules. We need to interpret the current situation. We need to understand the segregation that is inside, that is inside cities. There are many different types of segregation inside big metropolitan areas, which were not the case in the past. So we really need to uh, follow the future trends and the future evolutions. We really don't know uh, what the future holds in store for us, uh, even in terms of human behavior. In the past months, as Carlos said, people thought, OK, now people will go away from cities, will flee from cities, because uh, we all want to go back to nature, the pandemic. Uh, 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 has now given us the desire for greener areas. Uh, well, actually, at present, uh, we are not seeing people uh, fleeing from cities. If we look at the real estate market, uh, there are some areas 
that are not very central that ha uh, are witnessing an increase in prices because maybe people are not moving away from cities but are just moving a few kilometers away from the center in order to buy a bigger house. I think that we will also need to follow some typical trends of citizens of cities like the big spaces for offices and for department stores and shopping centers. We will need to understand how these areas will be uh, requalified. We have seen in Italy, for example, that there was a boom of online selling. Um, we have seen uh, a change in uh, uh, behavioral trends uh, and in purchasing behaviors. Maybe in the future uh, we will decrease uh, um, the, uh, the space used for office purposes uh, because offices will no longer be used as in the past. Maybe some buildings uh, will decrease their space for offices and some offices will need to be requalified. Then we will also need to understand what's going to happen with the sustainable mobility and how that will redesign cities. So there will be some uh, forces taking offices out or taking shops out of the cities and uh, they will be replaced by recreational activities or cultural activities. Maybe uh, uh, people will want to uh, have uh, uh, recreational activities, which was not the case in the past. Maybe we will also increase uh, parks, uh, cycleways, so city centers uh, to some extent may become even more attractive. But we need to pay attention because this type of trend is very similar to the trends that 15, 20 years ago led to the first forms of gentrification and exclusion of people from city centers, people that could no longer afford living in the city center. When city centers that are very sustainable, very green, very attractive are created, then prices boom. Hence, they become very exclusive and new forms of exclusion and segregation are created. I believe we will need to monitor these trends very carefully and uh, we will need to think in advance what's going to happen when uh, we need to redesign uh, the new forms of sustainable mobility or new parks because that will need to be done in an inclusive way. So has to prevent new forms of segregation, which we have already seen in the past and which uh, do not need to be uh, repeated. We have new resources. We also have uh, new objectives like sustainability and digitization. In my opinion, now we need to find the ability to work together. Oftentimes, this is what was most difficult. Uh, coordinate different administrative levels and give a swift response at a local level. De Caro made, made very practical examples uh, of what innovation uh, inclusion uh, uh, means at a local level. We were talking about a sp we're talking about space reconversion. Uh, I come from a uh, um, little town on the sea on the other side of Italy, on the other Italian coast, uh, with many uh, little hotels, small hotels. Uh, and lodges, uh, which have now gone bankrupt, gone bankrupt. Unfortunately, they are now trying to sell uh, their business, but they cannot sell because the major groups are not interested in buying uh, small hotels with only 15 rooms. 
Uh, these spaces cannot be easily uh, re-qualified into residential areas. The Caro perfectly understand what that implies, and this is very difficult. And therefore, there are many families uh, that are on the uh, uh, brink of collapse, and that need, they need an urgent response. So we will need to have a vision and we will need to provide a swift response to the mechanisms that are most urgently needed today. Thank you. Bene, dopo tutto quello che abbiamo sentito So now I well, Inetinaglia talked about change a lot. Uh, so changes are awaiting us. So I will ask Sambonomi what one million uh, and a half of square meters for re urban regeneration. What does this mean at the moment? So what does it mean to uh, do something like this outside the um, area of Milan? in this uh, very uh, particular uh, moment in time. So what are uh, the reference points you are using? Thank you, and uh, thank you for your question. Well, I could simply say that uh, we need to be passionate and visionary, but I will have to explain uh, better. This is the biggest uh, regeneration project uh, carried out by a, pri a private stakeholder. And so this is, uh, is extremely important in terms of how this regeneration plan was uh, drawn up because that area was characterized for centuries by the presence of heavy industries. Well, some ideas expressed by those who talked before me seem to go against what I do, that is to say, to make uh, accounts uh, meet every day. I met architect Bratti in the past and in terms of the need of uh, uh, social uh, contacts and uh, the pandemic in a way uh, has only given voice to a need that was already there in our society. So the need to plan areas that can actually facilitate the creation of new communities well, this is something that architect Ratti introduced in the master plan with the concept of common ground, that is to say common spaces, common areas, and uh, uh, all buildings, that also private buildings, that could be used by the public. So, well, the idea was to create new spaces, and this is what we're doing in Milano Sesto, in a more complex uh, project, so to speak. And we are actually trying uh, to, well, I'm trying to put it together uh, my ex personal uh, and profession professional experiences. There is a partnership uh, between uh, the public and the private uh, sector uh, with the mind, we had a very um, substantial public investment on the foundation and on uh, the uh, Human Temple project. Uh, with Milano Sesto, there is a, a, um, a strong public financial for uh, the so-called city for health and research, that is to say new hospitals that will uh, replace the hospitals that are now managed by two important public foundations. Uh, uh, the National uh, Institute for uh, Tumors and uh, the uh, um, 
Mass Institute. And uh, uh, well, this uh, public investment will be joined by other investment for the whole development plan. And uh, this is also accompanied by the interest of private investors of great relevance at international level. I have been lucky, so to speak, because uh, as soon as I've been um, appointed, uh, one Heinz, Heinz uh, expressed uh, their interest in investing again in Milan. It had already invested in Milan in the past. And uh, and now on the Italian market, uh, we have new development models we, which we would like to introduce in our regeneration. So you talked about uh, suburban areas. Well, I must say that uh, today I cannot really talk about a suburban area, a peripheral area. And I'm talking about Milano Sesto in particular as an area. Because if we can think of uh, 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 an aerial picture of an urban system, of a big uh, territorial system, you would see uh, just one urban uh, area that goes from Milan to Monza. And uh, the only separation is that of political or administrative uh, borders. There are no humanistic borders, so to speak. So in this urban area, there is uh, a fracture, which is to say our area, uh, a fracture that was uh, created by uh, the uh, fact that uh, the uh, industrial activity was discontinued. And uh, well, why do we talk about passionate people and visionary people? Because it's not easy to mend this kind of uh, fracture. fracture. So uh, the first idea that we have uh, um, shared with our investors is uh, to start by offering services rather than uh, places, uh, space. Uh, obviously, space is important also because, as I said uh, before, in uh, the end, uh, we need to have uh, a clear uh, accounts. So we really need to have uh, uh, or to pay a lot of attention to uh, in terms of uh, investment yield for our investor, investment tours and residential offers that are uh, uh, more for rent rather than for sale. And this is another visionary element which, uh, and uh, I'm convinced that this will be uh, made more concrete on our market from my generation uh, is the generation uh, that uh, is uh, based on um, uh, obsolete tools to a new generation uh, that has uh, every uh, technological tool at their disposal so we can actually uh, stop uh, or rather we can actually um, stop seeing uh, owning a house as something that people must do in their lives. So uh, the uh, rent market uh, would be um, targeted uh, with a new concept of buildings. And this is a new uh, way to uh, look at the uh, real estate market, the housing market. As I said before, uh, uh, suburban areas uh, are, were created uh, by a series of mistakes made by urban decision makers over the last uh, years where uh, the main focus was quantity rather than quality, and this creates social problems that uh, we are now trying to solve also with this uh, regeneration plans. Okay, so I've already uh, taken up too much time. Thank you. So now I will try to ask a very, very, very brief uh, question to all of you. So let's go back to Mayor De Caro. 
and uh, so this experience uh, was extremely interesting and uh, I think that it also actually follows the invitation by architect uh, uh, Ratti. Let's try and take a risk in terms of uh, renting. So uh, this is some uh, kind of challenge. So really 30 seconds, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, how will uh, the public-private uh, uh, relationship change in front of uh, these challenges? Because the public uh, service, uh, uh, the public sector just doesn't seem to help change. Very briefly. Well, I hope that uh, this uh, will change in a positive way. In my city, we have a lot of public, of uh, the positive examples in uh, of private-public uh, cooperation in terms of uh, uh, those areas that were called uh, peripheral areas that were uh, built in the past uh, only to let uh, people buy houses, uh, but there were uh, no services, uh, no community places or spaces. And now uh, we have uh, actually new ideas, we have new regional plans uh, that have terrible uh, uh, acronyms, uh, plups, uh, plips, uh, other words that have uh, actually don't really make sense, but they are uh, um, planning projects. And uh, obviously, the private sector was uh, involved also with an economic interest. And we also managed to create popular housing in uh, certain areas in a moment in uh, of our uh, in the history of our country uh, where uh, we didn't have the necessary resources uh, up to a few years ago there was uh, uh, the so-called solidarity pact that made it impossible for us uh, to have uh, certain economic resources so i believe that the future of our country will be decided by the cooperation between the private and public sector it is a joint challenge Thank you. Architect Ratti, who will the, really, the protagonists of this change be? One minute. Well, PPP, pro, uh, uh, Partnership tra Pubblico e Privato. So it's public and private partnership, but I would add a P that is uh, people, persons. So all together to think about uh, the city of tomorrow. Mr. Bonomi, you were talking about uh, the, the fact that uh, city borders uh, need to be overcome. So how does uh, the uh, Milano Sesto experience help to uh, create uh, this metropolitan city, which is uh, something we do not have in our uh, country? Well, I do hope this is actually what is going to happen, but we do have uh, a certain cultural heritage, I think, about Milan, where we believe that there are uh, really uh, some physical boundaries which are actually not there in terms of city boundaries. So I do believe uh, that a wise uh, a planning uh, that like the one we were talking about before would be the perfect tool to actually overcome uh, this uh, resistance. And I also believe uh, that the under the, the fact that the uh, the uh, COVID crisis has highlighted certain needs, as for instance, uh, the need for green areas, well, these needs might be m better met in what could be seen as peripheral areas today. For instance, we will uh, create uh, an urban park of uh, 45 hectares, and this is for us uh, a, an incredible resource, uh, also from uh, the point of view of the real estate market. In Italy, the um, conclusion, what are uh, the main points uh, for a national policy that will have to deal with urban aspects. As you said, this has been neglected in uh, uh, the last few years. Just two points, two bullet points. Well, this is not easy to say in just a few words. Well, I hope that we will become more aware of the situation, that we will we go back to studying and collecting data. As Ratti was saying, I have a lot of studies, research studies of a few years ago, but I need a clear, detailed research 
works that could include more recent data that could help us what understand the urban dynamics in Italy. And so it's time for us to get to study, uh, to understand our cities better, and to uh, actually uh, focus on cities, because that's how, how where our citizens live. And we have to bear in mind the quality of life of the people who live there. We need to think in terms of what would I need if I were to live in that city? So access to services, inclusion, beauty, culture. So these are aspects that need to be planted together in a very uh, aware way and in a very conscious way and also with the data, but also with a lot of heart. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank our guests. I would like to thank you all. And uh, well, I will not uh, uh, make any conclusions because I preferred to listen to what uh, the guests had to say. So well, we need to study more. There are uh, challenges awaiting us and uh, a great cooperation between the private and the public sector. I would like to remind you that the meeting in Rimini is a possible only uh, because uh, we have the volunteers uh, and to whom our big, big thank, but also uh, the uh, possibility, the opportunity for you to donate. So you will find uh, some uh, people with a red t-shirt uh, and they, uh, well, there you can actually donate for those who are here. Otherwise, you can also donate online so that the meeting experience can continue also in the next few years so that we can talk more about our cities. Thank you. Goodbye. Investiamo nel presente, prima raggiungiamo il futuro. Questa è l'idea che ci spinge ogni giorno a muovere il nostro paese verso la ripresa, a dare a tutti nuovi percorsi da seguire, a usare l'innovazione per essere più liberi di crescere, a esportare la nostra eccellenza italiana nel mondo, ad anticipare i cambiamenti per costruire un domani più sostenibile con tutti voi. Perché il futuro è la nostra destinazione solo se è un viaggio che facciamo insieme.
leggera nel silenzio assordante Per non cadere dentro al buco nero Che è stato un passo Romagna, finalmente un sorriso Più investiamo nel presente, prima raggiungiamo il futuro. Questa è l'idea che ci spinge ogni giorno a muovere il nostro paese verso la ripresa, a dare a tutti nuovi percorsi da seguire, a usare l'innovazione per essere più liberi di crescere, a esportare la nostra eccellenza italiana nel mondo, ad anticipare i cambiamenti per costruire un domani più sostenibile con tutti voi. Perché il futuro è la nostra destinazione solo se è un viaggio che facciamo insieme. Finalmente un sorriso.